Well, we can't wait either. The ground in magnificent condition. And players sorting themselves out. There's Michael O'Loughlin running behind the umpire, working out where he's going to be. And we get underway at Football Park. And Primus goes in, in ruck against Stafford. Comes straight away to uh, the Swans. And they kick it out of the centre center circle. Up towards the uh, front edge of the square. Lachlan fires out a great hand pass. Maxfield from 35 metres gets the first goal within 10 seconds. And I must say, how many times have we seen that? Uh, Maxfield coming through, receiving the hand pass onto the left foot. I mean, the Swans tend to try and set him up to do exactly that kind of play, Hawk. He just uh, oh. is such a hard, strong runner through the front of the centre square, and uh, that's the kind of start you need. Is Maxfield charging through. The ball had to be won by another player, which was... Uh, Philandia, yeah. Philandia there, Lee. It was a very good handball by him. Yeah, terrific play by the Swans. That's set with a... The type of start you need to quieten the home crowd, keep them out of the game. And look, it has been picked up by Paxman as well. Might prove to be a pretty handy toss to win. Decent breeze at the backs of the Swans in the first quarter, and if they can get a break by quarter time, that will help to take the home crowd out of the game. And look at this gang tackle. Three of them getting hold of the ball carrier before he had a chance to breathe. We have a, a, a strange uh, positioning. Paul Roos is on the wing at the moment on Donald Dickey. It'll be interesting to see what kind of setup uh, is going to evolve from that. Uh, Paul Roos plays a lot of spots, but rarely on a wing. O'Brien gets a kick up towards the front edge of the centre square. O'Loughlin features again, but well done out of defence by Kingsley. Kelly out near centre wing, fires out the hand pass which was beautifully delivered to Orchard. He floats one over the top and they're off and running the Swans. That was Saddington who was uh, picked up in the draft and starts in the 18, a young kid. And it looks as though there's a problem here for uh, John Stevens straight away, he might have dislocated a finger. You certainly called the help there uh, Drew and um, poor Kelly's been picked up by Michael Wilson from the Port Adelaide. Boundary throw in, Primus and Stafford. Well done, Primus. Caught by Philandia. David and Goliath. Down he goes. Ball up. I think there's a bit going on between Primus and Stafford. Bit of a chat. Number 26, the umpire, Vince Circia. With David Ackland and Hayden Kennedy today. Well done by Stafford. And pass fired out. Barry gets a good one. Maxfield again. He's kicked his second. How's that for a way to start a game? Yeah, brilliant play by Maxfield. He's starting on the wing. He's running to the centre. I mean, it's a great start for the Sydney Swans. And uh, Maxfield on the end of a couple of good handballs and kicked two goals. What a fantastic start for him. He's actually starting in the centre square at the moment. Uh, I guess where you start in the centre square doesn't mean where you're playing, but that's where he is at the moment. We're back. And we've been playing less than two minutes of actual football and Stuart Maxfield has kicked two goals. In the middle, little toe poke out of the centre circle. And Port have hardly had the ball yet for a possession. And here they get one eventually. Kingsley's kick up towards half forward. And uh, now they're off and running. And the kick out wide. Cummings on the 50. Takes it back outside the 50 to Lyle. Hospital hand pass, he was buried by Creswell, virtually the minute he got it. Just the, uh, the Port Adelaide forward line, give you an idea how that's lined up. Cummings is at full forward, Luff's his direct opponent, Laid is playing as a tall marking forward pocket, Carey's against him, across the half forward line, M Morton, uh, Poole and Boyd, Burgoyne. Uh, that's the general structure, just a two-man marking full forward line for Port. Ruse against Poole, Poole wins it for Port. Here's Maxfield again, he's kicked two goals and here he is at half-back flank. Up towards centre wing, camped underneath at Bond but he couldn't take the mark. The hand pass uh, came out quickly from Daniels but they've lost it. Stevens now for the Swans, good dive by Barry. Unsuccessful attempt, hard tackling by the Swans. But Port stand up to the pressure and the uh, ball's cleared out towards centre wing for Bond. Who strolls down the wing, kicks towards the 50. Carey dropped it, it comes to the back, and a chance for Port to get their first goal through Poole, dived by Cummings, off hands and through for a minor score. 
Well, they're just the kind of half chances you have to take, really. Uh, Scott Cummings had the chance to take a chess mark two metres out, but fumbled it through from behind. So things are certainly going with the Swans at this early part of the game, Hawk. Certainly is, Lee, and, uh, and plus in the uh, Swans forward line, there's only two players down there, Lockett and Barry for the Swans. Ruse kicks towards half forward. Here's Stephen Carey. Well, he's going bald, so he's gone the complete job to, for the shave. He shares it with O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin beaten to the ball, but he gets it again. Play on rule, the umpire. The hand pass fell short of Stafford. He goes in to apply the tackle, and it'll be a ball up. I think at this very early stage of the game, the thing that impressed us most about Port last year was their speed at the tackle and the chase and their real pressure at the contest. In this first five minutes of the game, it's the Swans have actually, I think, got the initiative in that really important, uh, real hardness at the contest area. No doubt, Lee. They've been second to the ball to Port Adelaide side. Stafford wins the hit out and gets it inside the 50. Comes back to him. He's going well. Left-handed handball. Well picked up for Landia. A centering kick, but uh, he didn't centre it as much as he wanted to. And the mark by Huskus, former Sydney Swans player himself, but an All-Australian when he came over to play for Port last year. Michael Wilson, the Norwich rising star last year. Up towards centre wing. Carey from behind, punches away and gets the ball away from Poole. See pull back groin problems restricted him to 10 games last year. Throw in, he wins the hit out, pull and a terrific roving by Eagleton off the left on the bounce to Cummings who gets rid of his opponent. It should be a goal coming up. Go going. I think what we saw then is we see quite often where you have non-Ruckman competing against each other and Darryl, Darryl Poole is a lot bigger and stronger than Rowan Wharf. And when they did that Ruck contest on the outer wing, Poole was the one who really got the ball running forward and really it was just Port Adelaide players, eventually Burgoyne who's the finisher that have ran onto the ball. But good Ruck work by Poole, set it up from that midfield contest. Peter Burgoyne, a great running goal there for Port Power. Bit of body work going on off the ball. Eagleton going shoulder to shoulder with Maxfield, who's kicked two goals already. And Primus beats Stafford. Bit of a fumble, but eventually the ball cleared by Franco. And the defensive mark taken by Nix back at half back. Nix towards the outer side. Creswell goes to ground, front on charge. It's a free kick to Creswell. And, and, and by the way, the guy who kicked that goal to Burgoyne was Eagleton, who's playing on Maxwell. has kicked two goals for this one, so Maxwell gave Eagleton a fair bit of room on that occasion. I guess we see it all the time. You run much quicker forward than you do backwards. I think this is a standard <laughs> thing with most footballers. You certainly do. We're the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Kick by Creswell, punch to the front, Kelly, great roving, one out is Lockett. Under pressure from Paxman, couldn't take the mark and the ball out of bounds. I guess I should rephrase that, you run much for, uh, faster into attack <laughs> yeah. than you do into defence, so yeah. we're not talking running backwards. <laughs> when you're chasing a bloke Lee, some blokes put the head down, they oh, don't look yes. too hard, do they? Very hard to, to <laughs> run hard on the chase. <laughs> well, the ball knocked out by Mead who won the best and fairest last year. So he'll go on the notice board in their first year in the AFL for Port Power. He's the first ever best and fairest. Stafford and Primus again. Well, now the Rovers required. Locked up in there. Bond floats the hand pass out. Dickey tried to get it back in, blocked by Ruse. And a throw in inside half forward for the Swans. Their only meeting last year was in round 11 when Sydney won over here by 35 points. They blocked up Port, flooded the back line and restricted Port to just four goals. Ball knocked down in the path of Bond. Beats one, beats two. Very well played. Out of defence by Wilson. Dickey in there for the tackle. That could be holding it. No, ball up. Well, the Port crowd wanted a free. Lee, Chris Nash is picking up Stewie Maxfield now, so obviously a change made by John Carr. In 
Cersei had to ball it up again. Right start by the Swans getting two goals in the opening 90 seconds. Both to Maxfield. Stafford wins the tap, comes to Ruse who was under pressure. Back to Stafford, has won some kicks after originally winning the hit out. Crunching through the pack was Kelly. Plays big three sides, there's no doubt about that. A terrific mark taken by Kingsley, who left his man and got to the front. And very early in the game, in fact, uh, Kelly went for that position, has been pushed forward, uh, something Rotten you does quite regularly with Paul Kelly, but rarely this early in the game. Bad bounce for Lyle. Oh, Preswell gave it straight up. Paxman, Lyle, terrific exchange of hand pass. Eagleton. Back to Paxman up the ground. Running off Tony Lockett. Carey. Stephen Carey again, very well played. Maxfield, a good trap, but loses it in the tackle. Yeah, now here's a chance for Poole. He works the ball out to Lyle. Up to full forward. Cummings caught behind it. Mark Favourite. Here's Scott Cummings. 30 metres from goal. O'Loughlin gets back. And it's through for a minor score. Well, I think that was pretty poor play by Cummings. There was two uh, Port Adelaide players streaming into open field, and I think he chose to do the U-turn. Pretty standard uh, team rule at most league clubs. No U-turns. Always look for the player from coming from upfield. It's not that easy to kick the ball over your shoulder. So I don't know whether the runner might end up pretty quickly out to uh, Cummings just to alert him to the fact, feed it off to the players coming through. Uh, Lachlan being told by the umpire to get on with it, son. Goes towards the outer side. Ruse under pressure. Terrific play on that occasion by Franku to get the ball away from Paul Ruse and out of bounds. And, and just touching on Ruse there, it looks like he's playing as a ruck rover with Troy Luck playing at full back on Scott Cummings. So at the moment, Ruse certainly looks like he's playing on the ball. Well, I think he is, and Bond at the moment is the spare player for Port Adelaide. So in fact, I think what you'll find is that Stevens has moved up onto the wing on Dickey, and at the moment I think uh, you find Ruse is virtually going as an extra on-baller, and Bond is the spare Port player who has to decide what's he do in his position. Does he hang back as a spare half-back, or does he push forward himself? It was interesting, this time, this game last year, it was well documented or well publicised that in fact uh, the Sydney positioning had supposedly caught Port Adelaide out. So uh, I would think uh, this would be a game that uh, John Cale would be pretty keen to make sure from his own personal point of view that it's not seen that Rodney Ead, as they say, out coaches him. Being possession by Poole. And it appears as well Promise is playing a kick forward of the ball towards Port Adelaide's goals here. You often find that, yeah, dropping forward, and uh, I think good play by Stafford. He ended up staying and doing the ruck work, but not getting drawn out of his position. Uh, Lachlan with the free, up to a big pack at centre wing. Creswell can't keep it in, and we'll have a throw in. But mention again, we're always intrigued when we watch the Swans play, because Paul Ruse is the player they use in unusual kind of roles. It yeah. may be that yep. he'll actually be the running defender today. As I said, they've lined him up on the wing, but he's just playing really as an extra non-baller. He contested the knockout then, as we saw, but he does some unusual jobs. And won it. Played on Harry Madden in the ruck once, didn't he? Yes, well, he's a very talented player, Paul Bruce, we know that. Carey missed with his attempted soccer away. Saddington gets the ball back. O'Loughlin over centre wing. And a dive's out of Mark Leo. Yes. Barry, magnificent mark. Into Ruse. Now the Swans running again. And after the ball was oh. delivered, silly play. Silly play by Donald Dickey, John. Yeah, Smith. for sure. I mean, when, when players know that uh, an opponent has, has disposed of the ball, it's just really undisciplined to do that because with three umpires, they're on a hiding to nothing. That was it, Hawk. That was the only thing that was ever going to happen. The kick had left the boot. All it was going to be was a 50 metre uh, kick downfield at the end of it. The word that I use, Lee and uh, John, I'd say it was very dumb. Yeah. It was a very dumb well, decision to make there. Unlike anything you ever did, Hawk. No, John's a ball player, as you know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Which balls I play most times. <laughs> Fancy the kick down the field, going to all and people. Archer, and Tony aren't you happy if you're the player on the end of that? Tony Lockett, oh. stand there, mind his own business. <laughs> Doesn't even have to take the Kick mark. it goal from 30 metres out. He's off and running. <laughs> well, Hawk, I reckon in a couple of areas there, John Cale will be livid. Uh, Scott Cummings up the other end, didn't feed the ball off to his players coming forward. That, I would say, cost... Port Adelaide a goal and, uh, and undisciplined, uncontrolled aggression there by Dickey. So uh, here we see here, the ball had left the boot. It was just going to be a yeah. free kick downfield. Nothing in it but free kick down the field, no doubt about that. 
and a free goal to the Swans just when Port was starting to stabilise the game. Yeah, the kick was certainly there, without a problem there. So Stevens down in midfield by Dickey. The relayed free to Tony Lockett. And Plugger gets his first goal. The Swans have three on the board. What a way to give Lockett his first goal. Creswell gets a difficult one out. Ruse misses with his kick. The ball's back in the centre circle. Haven't seen much of Darren Creswell, uh, Lee, so far in his first quarter. I don't think he's really hadn't touched the football this game. No, not at this point. He hasn't worked his way into the game. Primus wins in ruck. Magnificently defended by Wharf. And the Swans tackling hard. And in numbers. And that'll be a ball up. And it looks like Lee Kelly's gone into the forward pocket now. And... Uh, his opponent appears, I don't think it is Michael Wilson at this stage, no, he was actually, at him early. Yeah, Adam Huskis has actually okay. taken him when he went forward and uh, Wilson has uh, stayed in the midfield. I think they've been trying pretty hard, uh, the Swans, to make sure that Huskis is actually kept back to the full back line as much as possible. High tackle. High tackle, called by a fourth umpire, John Rosso, Russo, and agreed to by the field umpire. Wharf takes the free, Ruse once again finds himself in plenty of space. And pass over the top is good. Saddington. Lock it at the back. Had a chance. And all I want to do all day is kick the ball away from Lockett. Kingsley rushed it behind. It's a regulation catch there, uh, Lee. What regulation? Lockett should drop those. I guess they're the they're sort of those first quarter errors, aren't they? Sometimes early in the game, you haven't really sort of relaxed, got your rhythm, haven't got the hands, the ball handling sharp, and sometimes those very easy marks can just get uh, go begging. Doesn't matter how good you are either. It happened. Poole contesting hard. Caught by Orchard. Burgoyne. Exchange of hand passing, fantastic. Burgoyne kept on flowing up the ground. His left footer towards the 50. Armat. Through Luff it goes. Awkward half volley for Carey. He's in. It's a bother out of the air, down towards the forward pocket and out of bounds. Yes, as soon as the hand pass goes to the feet of the target player, he is in trouble because uh, one, it's going to test his ball handling skills. Secondly, even if he does take possession, he has to bend over straighten again and by that stage the tackle is on him and uh, really it was a that handball area error has kept the ball in the Port Adelaide forward line. Carey and Laid contesting. Paul Kelly with dash out of defence. Stevens. Kelly doing the oh, shepherding. He followed right up. Ball. John Stevens still going. To lock it. Great play by the Swans. Well, you could hardly work the ball better from back pocket to full forward than that. Yeah, that was copy, but wasn't Hawk. But it was it was Kelly who won the ball out of that boundary throw in, and Kelly who did the shepherd on the wing to support the ball carrier. Lee, amazing, Kelly. He's a player who I regard, I regard he's in his own club. It's called the 100 metre club. He runs about 40 metres and normally kicks the ball 60 metres. Only about 10 guys in the league yeah. can do that, and he's a guy who can do it. And his shepherd there for his teammate was just sensational. Set it up and supported the ball carrier. Unbelievable. He's a super player. Pretty. He's a great runner. <laughs> A class player who's a worker bee as well, which is exactly what you're looking for. He's your round, Ali. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tony Lockett for his second. The first was from a relayed free. This from a mark. That's a poor old kick from a man who's kicked so many goals. Big leap, great mark by Creswell. Well, that almost reminiscent of the mark he took against Hawthorne to win a final in the last minute. He doesn't do it a lot, but he does it enough to make us think that, yeah, every now and again, that um, pack marking situation, you don't think of Darryl, Darren Creswell no. as a marking play, but every now and again gets the fly at the pack in the goal square. He may have heard me cook him about five minutes Let's earlier. Let's talk him through it. What do you think you'll do here, Hook? He's going to go banana. for the banana. He's got to go for the banana. Has to What's go for the What's the percentages? Uh, probably one out of ten. <laughs> he may have got it too. Sure, he's not going to have another nine. <laughs> Right, go. Well, the one out of ten, Lee, he certainly ha has done the job and uh, just showed me I'm wrong again. Well, I must say, yeah, I mean, it's not an easy, as easy as it looks, but oh. uh, players, the ability to turn the ball on the boot, to sort of hook it back across the shoulder and to actually turn it to so it uh, spins away from the body as yeah. that banana kick does. Uh, he might not be able to do it nine out of ten, but he certainly did it uh, when he had to.
Well, Darren Creswell, he's a freak. When he first started, he probably wasn't much more than a tagger, but he's gone on to win a best and fairest, all Australian. How about that for an aerial mark over a pack for a man his size, Push and then the a back. banana kick. In the back, so Philandia will take a free kick, and look who's waiting for it. Paul Kelly, out of the middle with penetration. Lock it. Hands to it, but couldn't take the mark. Leo Barry right on the boundary line. Concede some ground to O'Loughlin, who'd float up the field. That was just great vision there by Leo Barry. I mean, he could have gone long to the goal square, but took the blinkers off and spotted uh, his teammate Michael O'Loughlin there. Great play by Barry. If you can give a player a set shot within the forward 50 at a re half reasonable angle, well, that's the play, isn't it? And uh, blazing away from the boundary lines, every now and again a spectacular goal will be kicked, but uh, more often than not, they'll be spectacular behinds. I think great vision was the word I was Terrific. trying to get there, Luke. Terrific. Swans have come to play. They've kicked four goals to one already. And a shot for goal for Michael O'Loughlin from 40 metres out. And he's got it! The only proviso I'd make is they do have a fair breeze. So we'll make a bit of judgment at half-time after Port Aven. Yes, that can be a little bit misleading, but uh, certainly a good player, isn't he, uh, Michael O'Loughlin? And certainly they've jumped out of the blocks, the Swans. They had exactly the kind of start. They've had five shots or six shots and kicked five goals, so they've been accurate as well and uh, doing really well. So back at Football Park and Sydney 5-1 lead Port Adelaide 1 goal 2 and uh, we're late in the first quarter but there's time for more goals here for the Swans. Poole takes the mark at centre half forward. And pass back. Long kick to the forward line. Cummings behind. Fumbles. Has a chance. Goals. That was very good play there by the Port Adelaide side there. I think it's probably Poole's first touch for the game. It's been picked up by Rowan Wharf, ex-Fitzroy player, and of course Sydney Swans as well. I saw, yeah, picked up, sorry, by uh, Rowan Wharf. He does look too strong for Wharf in the body-to-body, yeah. -body, Jules. It'll be interesting to see how long that particular matchup does. It wasn't a good defensive work by the Swans players to make sure he couldn't feed the ball on, even though eventually the goal was scored. So both full forwards are on the board now. Cummings getting his first. Lockett has kicked one. Matthew Primus faces Greg Stafford in the middle. Primus palms it down, flips out Sydney's way. Orchard, good hands Kelly, but he's lost it. Primus, good block by Ruse, smothering the hand pass. Then going in for the tackle on Wilson, and the ball out of play on centre wing. That was an interesting setup at that centre bounce. Uh, Stuart Maxfield went and basically played about 30 metres out from the Port Adelaide goal. His direct opponent, Eaglin, stayed out on the half forward flank. It then becomes, Dougie, a question of percentages. Who's the most likely to be used? Exactly right, Lee. You take your, you take your choice, you take that chance. But just touching on Port Adelaide, on their half forward line, Lee's been very quiet, been well held by Kerry, Karen, uh, Stephen Kerry. And of course, Poole's been very quiet, well held by Wharf. Solid bump was uh, delivered out there. And the whistle, and it's going to be a Port Adelaide free kick, much to the pleasure of the uh, local fans, against Leo Barry. And it'll be taken by Wilson. That is their first free kick, so no yeah, wonder they're cheering. I think that, they're right. keeping, uh, keeping count. That uh, was a big one. Is that a kick, Johnny? That was certainly a kick. I think it might even be more than a kick. <laughs> there is some strange uh, expectation in the game, however, that the free kick should be equal, which of course yeah. is not the case. They haven't written that rule yet. Well, it doesn't say they have to be equal at the end. Uh, very clever in midfield. And the hand pass delivered out to Eagleton, but the Swans are tackling and smothering and doing everything right. This is Nash, former Richmond, goes for goal, off hands, and a behind. To hit the post. Scott Cummings, who made his debut for Essendon, and kicked eight goals, which was against the Sydney Swans. It was a Sunday at the MCG. Wharf up towards centre wing. Stevens can't mark. Ruse Rose. Great delivery. And the mark taken by Stafford. 
Stafford to a one-out contest with Lockett. They get back to uh, help out Paxman, and that is terrific play, the mark by Mead. Now to Paxman. He's just a really good height percentage player, Darren Mead. Doesn't play outside his limitations, always makes the correct decision. Lade did very well there to Bond, and a perfect kick to Dickey. The hand pass into Eagleton. Eagleton with penetration to full forward. Cummings, Luff is his man, it comes to the front. Good tackle by Nash. And a ball up inside the 50. The crowd screaming for a holding the ball decision there. I mean, if a player grabs the ball and is immediately tackled and the force of the tackle dislodges it, it's got to be play on. And uh, to scream ball then is just a misunderstanding of the rules. Wharf. Nash, good hand pass. Eagleton hooked it back too far. Luff. I it was actually a forward and a goal kicker two years ago when they made the grand final and now he's filling in at full back while Dunkley's under suspension. Yeah, I think we've mentioned this bruise and just those couple of kicks into the port forward line, there's certainly, uh, it's much more difficult to kick the ball any distance to this right of screen where Port Adelaide are uh, aiming this quarter. That'll be a ball up by David Ackland. And as we have this situation down the opposite end of the centre-half forward position, you've got Primus and Stafford, the two ruckmen. It's obvious that uh, the Swans are prepared to give away a little bit of height in these forward not work contests to make sure that Primus can't just float across the half-back line and just uh, block it up, which he does so well. I think this looks dangerous, though. I really look at when you see, well, Carey's doing the ruck work here against Poole, which is a much better match-up than, uh, than Wharf and Poole. Down went Poole, the fans want a free kick. Johnny Russo. Absolutely nothing in it, mate. I mean, Poole was just trying to pinch a free kick from 25 metres out and uh, David Ackland didn't get sucked in and hopefully we could uh, maybe get another look at it. But Poole was just trying to pinch one, in my opinion. The Academy Awards have been given this year. Yeah, he was after the extra one. <laughs> well done by Kerry. But it's in the corridor. If Port can get it here, it could be trouble. And uh, beautifully read by Mooney. Armat lost a boot, <laughs> left it behind, up to Creswell. Philandia, good mark. Peter Philandia, lock it in the goal square. It's in that direction. You're in trouble, Paxman. Off hands to Ruse. Oh, it's smothered off the boot. Magnificent smoke. What do you think, Doug? That's got to be a free kick, Johnny. I don't, I don't. You saw that. I reckon Stephen Paxman interfering the ball wasn't five. Let's it, have a is look at this. still five metres? Yeah, the rule is five metres, and it's probably it's difficult to judge the distance, but it's certainly easy to judge the time. And and the ball is supposed to travel five metres in about a third of a second. So as soon as you see two actions, it's almost certainly that the ball was beyond five metres. So if you see the bump, yep. then the attempt to mark or contest, then it's Play certainly I've got to say, they might have tore the stadium down if that was a free kick, though. There wasn't a hell of a lot in <laughs> no, it, I that's right. it. The umpires have been told that it should put the play if it puts the player out of the contest to pay it. And uh, in those situations, it's very difficult to be, be yeah. consistent because the, the, the football public see the incident. They don't necessarily judge whether it put him out of the contest or not. What I'm always interested in is the, uh, the interpretation, the, the fact that Patsman was coming that's towards yeah. the front of Lockett. I'm, yeah. I'm never sure whether the, the umpires don't allow the player spoiling a little bit of leniency when he's coming with the ball. You can't really seem to make any contact at all with the marking player much. That's right. And a little kick up the ground by Burgoyne. And from centre wing, the Swans get it to centre half forward. Promised getting back in defence to take the mark. Paxman attempting to run off Lockett and the kick in the direction of Paxman. Look out, here comes Big Plugger. Paxman did pretty well. And 50 against yeah. Lockett. I think Plugger was maybe a bit lucky not to get pinged the first time because when Paxman took the mark, there really is no need at all to claim him. Now Plugger claimed him there and made sure he went to the ground, then tried to do the next thing and knock the ball out of his hands. I think we've seen 150 metre for uh, maybe two half 50 metre penalties. So Paxman, the full back, kicks to full forward, it gets through to the back, here's an open goal laid. I, I don't know if you call that good luck, or do you call it good judgment by Lane, then by standing about 10 metres from the pack, and the ball just cut through the pack, rolled out to Lane, he said, how did I get that? Hey, you're I'm you're good luck, have a look at this. <laughs> the Swats had all the players back, and it was, Cummings <laughs> making the play, but yes, 
<laughs> Sometimes luck's a fortune, and uh, well, it all counts in the end. He's got a goal, but was he in the right spot? No, he wasn't in the right <laughs> spot, but he kicked the goal. <laughs> So Brendan Laid playing about 20 metres behind the pack, gets a lucky goal and Porto within 10 points. So I think with this breeze blowing, the Swans have won a bigger lead than that at quarter time. Ruse flips the ball out. And a chance there for Daniels, down he goes. Hurried kick out of the pack up towards half forward, Eagleton's there. Ahmed, former Collingwood player. Under pressure, Creswell, somehow to carry. Through Hot Orchard it goes, to Nix. Nix long kick. Kelly is there. He wants to play on. Ooh. Oh, and did he? Did he play on, John? Yeah, well, look, when, when the player makes that very sudden action to play on, in my opinion, well, the umpire is instructed to call play on immediately. Once Kelly makes that spontaneous decision now to keep going, the umpire should be calling play on. Well, he had second thoughts about it. Yeah. He was allowed to Pretty go back and have a shot. Just 15 metres out. Good kick. I think he's got it. Well, you can just feel the pressure coming on here. Port Adelaide seemed to be applying a lot more pressure, Lee, in the midfield because just before that goal was quick kicked there, the Swans had three or four very rushed handballs to play. It's under enormous pressure. Yeah, the Swans are scoring well from their limited opportunities, I think. I mean, they've had seven scoring shots, kicked six goals, haven't gone forward that much, and uh, I suppose that's Kelly's ability as a midfielder to go forward and still have a chance of marking the ball. So Paul Kelly after marking and being allowed to go back and taking a set shot gets the Swan sixth with steadier. Stafford wins in the middle and there is the siren for quarter time here at Football Park. Well the margin's 16 points. Interesting to know whether the breeze is worth more than 16. Port will run with it in the second quarter. I don't know that Jack Cale can be too upset with that quarter. I think you often find you just want to be in front, breeze or not. I mean, there is a bit of a breeze going to uh, left the screen where the Swans went that quarter, but sometimes the breeze really doesn't do the work. In reality, it only allows you to kick the ball 10 metres further. Nothing more, nothing less. And, and don't forget, Sydney's had seven scoring shots and Port Adelaide six, so there's not much difference in scoring shots. So quarter time here at Football Park. Sydney 6-1-37 lead Port Adelaide 3-3-21. Start of the second quarter here at Football Park. Primus facing Stafford again. Two very athletic big men. Bounce favours Primus. And he rips out clean possession with a kick that didn't go anywhere. Robbie Armat. Support from Ruse up from halfback. Out to Maxfield who destroyed them early. Maxfield's kick inside the 50. Lockett caught behind. Magnificent mark taken by Meade. It's amazing, isn't it, to think that this guy's only in his second year of AFL football. As we said, best and fairest last year for Port, and that's a terrific debut year. Eustace has kicked terrific mark by Nash. Chris Nash kicks up towards half forward. Laid almost. Franku peeling for a free kick, not getting it. Hand pass is knocked on. And the Swans out of trouble. Armat. Kelly doesn't he cover the ground? What a perfect disposal. Stafford just behind the wing. He goes into midfield. He's got Stevens. Stevens pokes it up high. Lockett makes a contest of it. Philandia's hand pass and Lockett in space. Certain goal. Brilliant hands there again by Philandia. His hands have been very, very good, particularly early in that first quarter. And his vision, the spot I lock and over the top of the pack there was outstanding. So good play by Philandia. I think one of the things we see also is that whenever there's going to be a one-on-one -on -one marking contest between Paxman and Lockett, uh, the Port players are going to leave their direct opponents to try and make it a two-on-one contest to outnumber Lockett. And it was really the Port players going to the marking contest that uh, enabled Rod Lockton to hang back free. It looks like they're playing centre-half forward at the moment. Would appear at the moment though Lachlan is actually going into play around the centre half forward position trying maybe I think to give a, an opponent for Darren Mead who is maybe a bit too mobile. I think Mead in the air is pretty good and pretty effective against all the marking centre half forwards. Well, Poole's hand pass missed the target. Now Stevens has had a good game. 
after receiving a knock early. And it was a relayed free that finished up in a goal to Lockett. Creswell, who, like Kelly, is roving the field. Lockett. Haven't seen him lead once yet. Kuskis, smothered by Barry. Philandia. It's close. I think he's kicked it. It was just a brilliant smother there by uh, Barry. It was just unbelievable. The Port Adelaide player had plenty of time, which was useless to get rid of the football, but Barry in desperation just dived across, blocked the ball, and Philandia picked the football up and screwed the ball about 40 metres over his shoulder and a brilliant goal to the Swans. Yes, it just is creating a goal out of nothing, isn't it, Hawk? The ball should have been oh. up in the midfield for, for Port, but uh, Hugus took a bit too long and a good smother as well. Well, they're two important goals by the Swans into the breeze to start this second quarter. So they started both quarters brilliantly. Stafford, overrun by Maxfield. He comes back to it. Eagleton, the other number 11. Ruse's hand pass. Creswell, Orchard, great hands. Maxfield, Ruse. Stevens again, run down from behind. Put him off his kick. Mead, out to Lyle. And now Paxman, Huskis, got rid of it quicker that time. Awkward half volley, set the ball up beautifully for Nix. Stafford, the Swans using the ball magnificently. Kelly at 20 metre hand pass. Philandia, who set up a goal this quarter and kicked one. Lock it up high and gave away the free kick. Definitely a free kick there, Johnny Russo. Yeah, that's, that's the one we were talking about, actually, if we get to see it again. Um, but we won't. Oh, yes, we may. Here we see it now. No. If, uh, if there are two actions like that, then it's almost invariable that the umpires will penalise the player that does it. So once Pax Paxman takes the free. Once again, Port Adelaide turned the footy over. has been very ordinary on occasions here, and, and uh, Swans are making them pay by their bad mistakes, Port Adelaide. Kingsley up over centre wing. Well seen over the boundary line by Nix. Now here's the smother again by Leo Barry. That is just a great, great goal maker. Great smother, but oh. I must say you would have thought Adam Huskis should have would have seen the smother coming and may have pulled out of the right foot kick on the left side or something. No doubt. Lade's kick went nowhere and uh, uh, Lyle's kick rather and Maxfield intercepted. And now uh, Porter working their way out of defence. Huskis might have taken one step too many again, but this time he got the kick away. Centre of the ground, Eagleton. One out is Cummings. He gets behind Love. But out in the forward pocket. That's interesting. Paul Rue still cruising around in a vacant sort of position. I don't think Donald Dickey's not quite sure what to do, whether to go with him, stay out on the wing, because Stevens, as I say, he keeps pushing up to the wing after the centre bounces, and Bond's the one who uh, is getting a bit confused about where he should be doing. Luff concedes it behind. I don't think Roos really cares to leave the stage who's playing on him. He well, just seems to be like playing the ball like, more like the, the old days as a kid. Yeah, it's more the fact that Roos is such a good ball getter. You know, he's a very dangerous player to let him play his own positioning. And it'd be a bit of a clue to go with him because he'd take you to the ball a bit, wouldn't he? He'd give you some idea, yeah. like, I reckon, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz. Carey to Stafford. Good spoil. Franco in front. Showed him a clean pair of heels, floats over the hand pass, and a chance for Burgoyne for his second. Not a great kick, but it gets there. A good build up by uh, Port Adelaide there with Frank, who uh, his vision was very good to get the ball over the top there, and uh, apparently finished off again by Burgoyne, who's kicked two goals now, and have been very dangerous up in uh, the fourth line Let's of Port have a Adelaide. look at this again, how Burgoyne kicks from just inside 50. He could have ran a lot closer, although it goes to some player was pressuring him, but the closer you get to goal, the more chance you've got to kick it. Twenty-one points the margin, and that was Port's first goal of this second quarter, so they've used up a fair bit of wind-assisted time, nearly seven minutes, to get their first goal. Another ball up. Young Orchard Lee's got the job on Burgoyne, who's kicked two goals and appears to be very dangerous up in Port Adelaide. He's a very quick, uh, classy 
small forward, isn't he? He always looks like he's got a chance of bursting through. Like this kid too, Eagleton. I think he's a good little player. He is a good player. Pool's hand pass. Running past Bond. Laid, but too wide. Even if Laid had marked that, it wouldn't like his chance of kicking a goal from there. Both times Porter gone forward, it appeared to have gone very deep to that far side of the ground and not kicked the ball towards the centre. Yeah, I've got a feel the wind is probably pushing it out there, so you really have to direct it to the left, uh, the uh, near side of the ground where, they, uh, where we're watching it from and the ball will blow back in the centre corridor. Flipped over the back, Kelly hits it at 100 miles an hour. Ruse, Ahmad, showed them the ball and took it away. His hand passes brilliantly blocked. Well done by Dickey. I uh, thought he took it over. Yes, it's out of bounds. Yes, well, what's that dual? Uh, I've spoke about it a few times. The Ruse, Dickey, Stevens, Bond. That little foursome. Because it's a question of which two of those players, which side gets the benefit from the fact that there really is not two pairs playing, but uh, a bit of uh, floating uh, freedom for most of those four players. Two players go to ground, both with eyes on the ball. Here's a big chance now. Wide out in the forward pocket, hooked back towards goal, and they never some goal! It looked like it was... Uh, Jackson Eagleton, 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 yeah, Eagleton, that left Eagleton, footer yeah. happened to be on the left side. I must say, I, <laughs> I thought he probably could have almost ran harder into the centre. Don't have a look at this. He puts the ball across his body, and it's great skills to put it back in. I would have thought he should have maybe just charged at centre-half forward and straightened up and had maybe an easier kick, but... The execution of that ball and that kick across the body for the most players is so good that they make it work. And Nathan Eagleton with a brilliant running goal from the forward pocket and he gets Port within 15 points. So two goals each in this quarter. Comes down. Eagleton out of the middle again. A dive by Luff. He's missed it. Cummings buys out the hand pass. Burgoyne round the corner and Carey's there in the last line no distance with the kick but Maxfield camped underneath it to mark 8-1 Sydney 5 goals 4 Port so equal scoring shots but 15 points the difference Stefan Carey at half back couldn't take the mark Dickey fires the hand pass to Wilson who drops it in the tackle Franco they're under pressure Port Nicks under pressure Sydney, well done Eagleton, he's had a brilliant couple of minutes, terrific hand pass, Franco round the corner, is a perfectly delivered kick. And I think that was all set up by Cummings, who was coming back with the flight of the ball against Carey, but he actually turned his back and backed into Carey, uh, John, and otherwise he would have been free kick. I That's thought that right. was a really good, intelligent piece of play to keep the ball in the area without giving away the free kick. And then there was a lot of touches of the ball before <laughs> someone got a con constructive disposal. That was Wilson to Franco. Franco kicks for goal. He's away to the left. And that wind is basically dragging in exactly that direction. That's certainly favouring left of screen, but uh, pushing uh, from far side to the uh, camera side in terms of its actual direction. Kick in is good, and Saddington takes the mark. There's an interesting bloke from the Eastern Rangers. Swan's number one pick in the October draft, but his first kick here today hasn't covered him in glory. Pool to take the free. He can't get past Preswell. Wilson taken to ground. Burgoyne. Clever kick to put it out in front of the goal square. But Luck took a good mark standing his ground. Trouble for Orchard. Oh. Preswell keeps it in. Spirals at the centre wing. All port. And Huskis takes the mark. Now they're the ones, I mean... Oh, game goes on. Kingsley, about 40 metres from goal. Pool. Chris Nash! Well, that's one of the reasons why uh, Port Adelaide recruited Chris Nash, his ability around the goals to kick those little goals. I mean, runs over the shoulders, he's well known for his times at Richmond, and uh, that was no exception there, Lee. And they got the goal out of it, but as you were saying, John, back on the centre wing here, when Huskers marked the ball, the, 
the sort of the claiming uh, tackle, yeah. as it were, to stop him going back was pretty severe. I know the classic defenders say that uh, players have to be given the opportunity to do that. But Port Adelaide have kicked the last three goals and they're within eight points. Out of the middle towards half forward, but Mead marks towards the outer wing and moving it all right. Lyle, kicked by Lyle towards half forward. Franku, ball punched away by Nix, back near the centre circle. Up inside the 50, bounces over Cummings. Wharf. To O'Loughlin. Michael O'Loughlin. Another All Australian from last year. Always seems to have plenty of time. Spilt mark could be costly. It comes through to Stafford. Who surely oh, tackled him when he didn't yeah. have the ball. I agree with you. There was no free kick, no signal of advantage, just nothing paid whatsoever. And now that's a poor kick to the forward line, out of bounds near half forward. I think, in fact, sorry, John. Sorry, go on, you go. I was going to say, I think it was a good kick because he looked up through and he didn't have anywhere to kick it. All he did was make sure, and it was definitely a free kick, wasn't it? Yeah, no doubt about that. Bond certainly didn't take possession of the footy, and Stafford just threw him to the deck. Lyle runs into a dead end of Stevens. But as I was saying, what I thought Meade did well, he looked up and there was no port players on, so he kicked it long and wide. So he was going to get 50 metres, it was probably going to go out of bounds, so I think sometimes getting length and putting the ball out of play is the best option available. I think O'Loughlin's kick a bit earlier, Lee, was pretty ordinary. He was yeah. very well clear and missed his target by about 5 or 10 metres. Ford in attack again. Cummings! He was swapped initially, but finished up with the football. Wolf's hand pass. Maxfield through the middle. Down the centre corridor. Now swinging out wide, a short pass. Putting the ball out in front. Mooney goes short to Barry. Too far out to score into the breeze. Lockett wants it long. Haven't really seen Plugger offer a lead today. He's camped underneath it. One out. He's got it. Oh. The hand pass. Oh, Creswell out of the air. Oh. <laughs> that is just very casual. I was going to say, I think for a terrible moment, everyone in the Swans' interest, including Lockett, oh. including Rodney Hood, thought that handball was just going to go through by itself. Did it but be a bit lazy to leave the handball off? <laughs> well, a little, but it was certainly on. It made it certainly on, but it just went a little bit further forward of Creswell than I think he was aiming. And here was just, Paxman was just a little bit concerned with Lockett, wasn't he? Just missed the ball. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it appeared very casual, that handball, and uh, Chris Dillon had come off, and good luck to Creswell getting his foot in the footy. <laughs> Gee whiz, that's very good, uh, big plugger there. Creswell's kicked a couple of goals. Maxfield's kicked two. O'Loughlin's kicked two. Here's Franku now for Port. Beautiful pass. Nate fires off the hand pass. Lyle! Offline. And lucky to score anything. Yes, they've got to make, take their chances. The Swans really aren't missing down the other end. Nine goals, one. That's terrific conversion. Uh, six goals, five. So certainly there's nothing in the game, but the uh, extra accuracy, the better accuracy, is keeping the uh, Swans in front. We'd like to kick in as easily as that every time. Wharf to O'Loughlin. Now it's at centre wing. Ball flipped out by Barry. Now Stevens. He's having a good day, John Stevens. He survived open heart surgery to play AFL football and a knee reconstruction. Well done, sir. Bionic <laughs> man. Yeah. And what's happened here, Lee? Looks like Michael O'Loughlin has been well held by Meade in this second quarter. Uh, it looks like Ronnie Edge pushed him up up in the midfield. Yeah, just pushed him up. They just try to float an extra player behind the play, don't they, the Swans, just to uh, to try and uh, get a, that running game going. Barry, is a player who's stepped up over the last couple of years for the Sydney Swans. Been on the list for a while. But doing well. Adam Huskus. Surrounded by former teammates here today. We've got a position here where the Port Adelaide are outnumbering the Swans around where the contest is, but sort of 20, 30 metres away, you've got three Swans players. Fuscus, who was once so proud of the Sydney Swans that he actually had a haircut of the Sydney Opera House in his hair. 
He's a different boy, isn't he? He is. He's got the fishnet stock. He also <laughs> liked the ladies clothing. <laughs> He's a cool dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Tackling's tough in tight. What about the ruck contest, Lee? How do you think that's going this day? You think Primus is on... There's no real big yeah, I, I don't think I, there at all. Regardless, and, yeah, regardless of who's getting their hand of the ball, I don't think it seems to be influencing what happens, you know, after they touch the ball. It's just a push and shove, and then it goes into the middle of the scrum of players, and it's a question of who can get it out. This time it was the Swans. No, Lachlan. Chopped off in defence, and Eagleton. is going all right. Kicks up towards centre wing. McPherson on the ground for the Swans. Marks on the chest. Back to the 50. O'Loughlin waits at the back. And he's got it. Here's Silky. Primus' hand pass. And they've worked it out of defence, but Wilson had to meet it hard, and he did it perfectly. The hand pass over the top by Nash. Franku. Now to the 50. Ruse never got near it. Comes down to Wolf. And back to Rowan Wolf. Oh, he went one step too far. He's gone. Now, this is, there's three players everywhere here. It's a question, can he find one of them and get it going quickly enough? Got to think your way through, and he has. Michael Figgitz on this side. And Michael Wilson, just one of the best tacklers in this outfit. That was a terrific tackle. Eagleton's kick up to the full forward pocket. And Carey seeks the sanctuary of the boundary line. Wins a throw in. A lot of space opening up in this game, and a lot of free players getting clear for both sides. So really it becomes who can make the least amount of errors, least amount of turnovers, and of course that was a critical one, great trace, but you would have thought that Wolf would have seen him coming. Franco kicks for goal, hits the post. I think the whistle had gone before that. Yes. He's got to come back. That's yeah, interesting. I, I guess he would have paid the advantage if it had gone through for goal. Uh, yeah, well he didn't blow time on until after he saw it hit the post, yeah. so yeah. That's fair enough, yep. I don't think anyone should yep. complain about that. So it'll be a free kick to Lay. I think the key point was it was an instinctive kick at the goal. It wasn't as if he ran 20 metres. I don't think he could bring it back then, right. but it was a, a grab it and a quick kick. Well, the goal he kicked in the first quarter, he didn't have a second to think about it. He just found himself 20 metres behind the pack, unmarked in front of goal. Let's try him on a set shot. Now he gets away to the left. Well, we know which way the wind's blowing. Those players <laughs> down there should, Dougie. I thought he really just aimed pretty much centre and it went left with the breeze. Yeah, certainly. They should allow more for the wind to draw that ball back to the right-hand side of the screen. McPherson, who played in the grand final two years ago and went missing last year, played only five games. Nick's on centre wing. Saddington. O'Loughlin. Gun. Came from Adelaide originally to Sydney. Won all Australian selection. Huskus also all Australian. And just inside the boundary line. It's calm defence though, isn't it? I mean, they, he thought his way out of that situation when he was under intense pressure. Oh. Little Danny Morton, extra floor boy. The very good mark for his size. Yep, magnificently. Nash. So they've come from far and wide. Kick by Nash towards half forward. Wharf gets in front of Poole. Hand pass into McPherson. Low down. Hooney. He's off. Across the ground to Kelly. It's in good hands now with the skipper. Thump. Long. To Lockett. He gets free. No mark. Primus gets the hand pass out. And now they're out of trouble. Kingsley. Nash. Good game, 12 point margin, Swans in front. Hand pass from Burgoyne comes into Franku. Oh, look at the space here. It's a Paxman running off Lockett. Oh, that could nearly be 50. Mm. Doesn't that well, one or the other? Got it. I agree with you. That has to be a 50 yep. or no, no, If he's played ball. on, then it's holding the ball. If he hasn't played on, it's 50. What are you Not doing, John? Paul Kelly drags him to the ground, 50 metre penalty without doubt. No, I must admit, I think he might have played on, to be honest. Well, but just go, it's all a matter of opinion and judgment, but should be one or the other, we think, John. Yep. So the full-back kicks for goal. It's kicked at a mile. Just off hands. Actually, Cummings probably should have marked it. That's the second time, in fact, that Paxman has charged up from full-back 
He didn't get used the first time, and when it went back, Lockett almost marked it unopposed. And uh, it's a, that's the kind of question where Lockett thinks to himself, oh, geez, I don't want to chase him all day, but what's my choice? That's the ability of Paxman. He can run down the ground and yeah. get those kicks and, and maybe kick one or two goals. And it's the kind of pressure the key defenders put on their forward opponents now to make sure that they uh, have to chase them up the field, get them out of the forward line. Can't kick a goal when you've chased your opponent up the other end. Certainly, Lee. Person's hand pass. Well done, Saddington, playing in his first game. Dale Lewis just on the ground. He kicked into the back of a teammate. It comes to Nix, who should stroll in for a goal. Hooked his kick badly. From behind. I think it's a great example there that where a player has one bounce is too many. I mean, he was only 25 metres out, 30 metres out. They had that bounce lead. I think he could have ran that five metres and steady and kicked a goal yeah, himself yeah, plenty of time. I'm, I must admit, I'm a believer in getting as close to the goal as you can, but that's no yeah. point if you end up being under pressure by running too close to an opponent. Yep. Dickey, hand pass back. What a magnificent tackle. Dispossesses him. Creswell to Lewis. Concedes some ground. O'Brien. Lockett has another chance. Oh, he's dropped it. He's got another chance. Has to give off the hand pass. Armat. And he's missed it. You wouldn't believe they couldn't get a goal out of this. No, or has he missed it? it? He got it. Yep. Get all those telling those goal up boys get back to the middle, Drew. They just love getting back there and getting ready for the big drama. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good goal by Armit and uh, Greg O'Brien's been fairly quiet. He's probably only had two kicks. So he's only had two kicks so far in this game. And, and he's starting on interchange, Hawks. Yeah. He's pretty hard to get a kick there. It is very hard, really. Hawk did it. Hawk did it. <laughs> well, he's been very unlucky then, not to get four kicks. <laughs> <laughs> now, about to see a first gamer come on. Matthew Bode, who was number three pick in the preseason draft. So then he got him a few weeks before the season and here he is playing his first game. Good effort. Franku's kick up short of half forward. Nash. Chance. Offline. Kicking themselves out of it, aren't they, Port? They yeah. uh, really just, they're trying so hard to get on turns for the Swans and they're peppering away, but they're missing and the Swans keep going forward and just kicking that goal or two to maintain a pretty comfortable lead. Three yeah. more scoring shots, but they trail. So Primus is off, and Bode is on, so it's a different balance to the side now. Stefan Carey takes the mark up yeah. on the logo centre wing. See a few of those, don't we, Lee? Yeah, you just don't know. I must admit, that if you're an umpire, you think, well, do you pull them back, or do you just allow it to go on? It's a fine line, isn't it? It's very, very fine. Lewis to Stevens. Johnny Stevens is having a terrific game. He's coming up for his ninth kick. Taken three marks. Puts it out in front. Mooney! Well, he got in the way of Plugger, oh. and I tell you what, Jason Mooney, I would uh, be going to the insurance office on Monday and increasing my uh, premiums. I think Plugger made some contact there to Mooney's uh, <laughs> head then, I reckon, just quietly. Yes, yeah, so I must admit he was going pretty hard. We often say in football one of the hardest positions is to be the defender to stand in front of Tony Lockett. Not that hard Ooh, yeah. being... Uh, definitely a free kick if he had to mark the ball. <laughs> to his teammate. Long tackle. So Mooney right in front. Bangs home the goal. I tell you, there's some dangerous signs there for Port Adelaide, Lee, with uh, Primus coming off the ground and uh, Young Bode coming for his first run. In the midfield, they're starting to get chopped up, even though Eagleton's been very good, particularly mm. uh, in this third quarter, early in the third quarter. Yeah, well, they are getting it forward, but it's just simply the scoring efficiency at the moment. Uh, and late often will go into the ruck to give uh, Primus a spell, so he's probably a little bit more mobile, a slightly different type of ruckman. Another change for Port Adelaide. Stuart Dew coming on the ground to replace Bond. Dew played just one league game last year. Laid on the ball with Primus sitting on the bench. Saddington for the Swans. Out to Ruse. Young to old. Ruse across the ground and Nix. Good played by Paul Ruse. Nix breaks free or did, does he? Wilson got him. That's a high tackle on Philandia. But he plays on with it. Lockett's had a poor day really. The hand pass back to the 50 to Kelly. Short pass, sets it up for the opposition to spoil, and they've done it successfully. Over centre wing. Oh, oh a good mark. mark. Isn't that a good mark? That's a genuine winning a contest, isn't it? A terrific mark by Burgoyne. To the goal square. Bouncing. 
just to the wrong side of the goal post. Not going for him, just no, not going for him. Kicking him, Lee, and uh, with promise coming off the ground, uh, Brendan Lake has been forced to go in the ruck, who'd been struggling at centre-half forward for him, and Stephen Kerry's gone in the ruck as well on Lade. Great mark by uh, Bergwijn. Plenty of it. Ruse a fumble. Missed tackle though. The tackle was missed and the ball was cut out. The uh, mistake wasn't uh, made to pay. Love to McPherson. Up to centre wing, Kelly. And out of bounds on the wing. It's Six. interesting. There's a certain speed that the tackling player has to approach, doesn't it, Hawk? If he actually just runs absolute flat out, well, then he can't change direction to lay the tackle. And I thought Cummings just attacked it a bit too hard rather than with that controlled uh, speed at it. I think, Lee, there's certain players you don't attack too hard. Players, particularly years ago, like Greg and Flea on yeah. the you don't run them, you're never going to get them. They'll no. step you every time. That was, a, that was a poor kick in, wasn't it? I mean, it went straight to Ruse, who was floating back into that uh, half-back line. And he's had the merest of 14 possessions well prior to half-time. Saddington, who's settled into his first game pretty well. Stevens. Stevens long. Won't reach Lockett. Might on the bounce, but he's a long way from goal. Paxman gets rid of him. Lewis, open forward line. Oh, Kelly right in front. 35 metres out. His opponent was probably about 10 metres off there, Lee, off Kelly there. And I, I think he's been picked up by uh, Adam Kingsley, I think, at this I stage. I think that's still Wilson on him. I mean, they, I bet Kelly's going forward quite a bit, but it's just very hard to stay alongside your opponent in general play, isn't it? I mean, you're both looking at the ball. Uh, Kelly kicks another one. Sydney 12 goals, too. There's a player like Kelly, the Robert Harveys, the plenty of on-ballers of that ilk who just keep running and running. And for, in general play, it's very hard, as we said, for their uh, direct opponent to stay alongside them. You're going to yeah, get yeah. separated by a few metres. And when this, maybe, you know, Wilson's covering the goal side, but certainly uh, got a long way clear, Kelly, didn't he? You need your teammates to give you a chop, at least. Sometimes you do get caught out, as we all do know. Paul Kelly has now kicked two goals. Four of the Swans have kicked two. They don't include Lockett, who's kicked just one. I'll give you a stat. Lockett's had more handballs than kicks. Two kicks, four handballs. Oh, look at Kelly just crunching through. Goes up! Magnificent football! Oh, if he kicks this, how good will this be? Lockett's there and marks. Well, two Brownlow medalists, but Kelly, nine votes out of ten. I reckon if you open him up, Lee, and you see he's hard to be as big as he is, he's just a yes, machine, this yes, guy. Yes, a fantastic role oh. model for The way he plays his football, the way he conducts his life, he's just a, a fantastic captain in all uh, respects. I think uh, the word champion gets chucked around a bit too easy these days. Yeah. This guy certainly fits right in that category. He is a champion. So Tony Lockett lining up for his second goal. Think he'll kick it straight, or do you think he'll try and open up the angle? Hawk? What do you think? Kick it straight, Lee. This one, the big fella. He'll go straight. He can't play on the siren. He can't play on Johnny Russo. It, the, the, no. uh, set, the umpire in the centre of the ground has actually signalled the the end of the quarter. That'll be nothing, won't it? Uh, that, no that's... score. Gee, you can be unlucky. <laughs> Tony Lockett. Yeah, well that's interesting because the umpire at that end of the ground obviously didn't hear the siren. That was Vince Sercia. So if he didn't hear the siren, then nor did Tony Lockett. The only umpire that actually acknowledged the sound of the siren was the umpire in the centre of the ground. So uh, was it was a goal. I actually I, I saw think the he umpire, I heard the siren and I was and I saw the other umpire, what was he going to do? But if, if Tony had heard the siren, you think he, he wouldn't have played it? He wouldn't have played it.